All right, hey everyone. So in this video, I have the RetroTINK 4K hooked up to my Sony uh, OLED TV. This is an A80J OLED TV. And yeah, um, if you saw my previous video where I unboxed the RetroTINK 4K, I actually wasn't able to try it on the 4K TV because the 4K TV that I was going to use was actually broken. <laughs> so yeah, so now I have my OLED though, and we're gonna try it here. So let me show you how I have it set up. Okay, so I'm using this uh, HDMI mod in Nintendo 64. Got a blue retro controller adapter here in the front. And then coming out of it, I have a, a modified monster cable that works on Nintendo 64. And yes, yeah, so we'll be using S Video. And then also I have the HDMI mini coming out. And then I have the, um, there's a Nintendo Switch high speed HDMI cable coming out of the RetroTINK 4K here. And that is going into my Denon A or B receiver, which, wow, Ooh, it's kind of dusty on the top. I'll have to clean that off. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, that's how I have it set up. And then the Denon A V uh, receiver is going into the 4K uh, OLED TV over here. This is a 77 inch. Um, yeah, really nice model. And this was back when you can, uh, it has more black frame insertion techniques available as well. And so, yeah, I think some of the newer OLED models, I don't know about from Sony, but at least from LG, some of the newer ones don't have as many black frame insertion options. But yeah, this model from, this Sony model from 2021 does have it. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on the Nintendo 64 and without changing any settings, without applying any filters, CRT filters, and we're just going to see how it looks. Okay, and I'm, let me turn off the lights here. Okay, lights are off. I'm going to switch inputs. Okay, so I changed it to the input that was labeled N64 Digital. So let's see if this is the right input. All right, so turn on the 64. Let's see what happens. Okay, this might not be the right input, so pause the video while I find the right one. Okay, maybe it's the input that says N64. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Ooh, wow, that's a loud sound. Oh boy. Well, the sound's working. Wow. <laughs> it's because I was just watching the movie while I was cleaning up this room so I could actually record. Holy cow, and I had the sound up. Well, yeah, the sound sounds great. Boy, yeah, I have an app. I have a, a Dolby Atmos um, <laughs> sound system set up here. And uh, yeah, it's definitely coming through. All right, yeah, so I can already tell this is the HDMI out, and yeah, it looks uh, looks great. It looks really crisp. I can tell it's the HDMI out because, um, looking at it, I can tell that the aspect ratio is uh, shrunk a little bit, so these must be square pixels. Wow, I feel like I have to... Sorry, I, sh I need to stop yelling. <laughs> that was just really loud. <laughs> but, um, okay, I'm going to stop yelling because I think I turned it down enough where you can hear me. Um, but yeah, anyway, so... I can tell that this is a square, uh, these are square pixels, so the screen is a little uh, condensed. Um, yeah, of course I'll double check. Let's see, where's my retro 4K remote? So yeah, so now if we switch the input here, hopefully this will work from where I have it set up. Let's see here. There we go. Yeah, see it's, it says HDMI active. So now let's go down to S video and watch it'll get wider. Come on, I'm gonna have to move this retro team 4K so it can, yeah, hit it, okay. All right, cool. So that was interesting. So at the front there, it said it was 480i at first and then it changed to 240p. Um, but yeah. Also, interestingly enough, the sound is actually a little bit softer when you're um, using the analog inputs. Interesting. But uh, yeah, I like this aspect ratio better too. Um, probably just because it's what I'm used to when I'm looking at a CRT TV. And now I'm going to check to see if my TV is in game mode. And yes, it is. It's good. Boy, I know people really like LG TVs, but I've, I've had LG OLEDs. And boy, I really like this Sony OLED. The, the LG OLEDs are nice, but man, the Sony's, I'm glad I got a Sony. Um, but yeah, not to, again, not to say the LGs aren't good, I'm just saying I really like the Sony, especially for SDR content. 
I if you saw my video I did a few years ago where I had the I had a 77 inch LG OLED and then this, this 77 inch uh, Sony OLED and yeah or this model I guess technically it was another one because then I got it replaced because there was a problem with the first one I had uh, where they installed it and then kind of damaged it a little bit but anyway I had this model of Sony OLED and then this and then the LG OLED right next to each other you can go back and see my old video where I did that and they were pretty similar uh, but boy the Sony is king on SDR just yeah really really good on SDR and yeah and that's really I, I never use I hardly ever use HDR on this TV because SDR is so good it looks so vibrant much more vibrant than HDR so anyway that's enough rambling about the Sony OLED uh, but yeah let's let's just kind of switch back and forth here between HDMI and S video so I can position this it's kind of I have the retro uh, or the <laughs> retro team 4k behind the 64 so it's kind of hard to reach it but uh, with the remote but anyway let's see if we can let's switch over to HDMI wow it switches really quickly I didn't even see a drop at all yeah HDMI sound is definitely louder um, but uh, wow I am I am impressed with these holy cow yeah, with this S video cable, <laughs> this thing is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to S video once we get to the. Like, look at this. So here's HDMI, and then here's S video. I mean, S video looks amazing. I am, I can't believe it. I've never seen S video look this clean on a on an HD TV before, and I don't even have any CRT mask applied or anything. I mean, wow. I, so, uh, wow, I mean, I have done other scaling options. <laughs> I don't even know what resolution this is. This probably isn't even 4K. Let's see. Let's switch it to, let's make sure that we're in 4K. So, let's see here. Hold on. Let me get the menu to go away. Okay, so I'm going to hit the 4K. So on this remote here, I'll show you what I'm looking at. If you can see that there's these resolutions here. Because before I was only able to do 1080p, so I assume that's what it's on still. If it saves your settings, so I'm going to try to make sure that it's in 4K. It actually might be in 4K because it's not changing. Let me try and change it to 1080p. Okay, yeah, so it was in 4K, I guess. So now this is 1080p. So now I'll say okay, and then. Yeah, so I can already tell that 1080p isn't as sharp, but now let's switch over to 4K again. And again, this is S video. Yeah, 2160p. Wow. <laughs> this is kind of incredible. Holy cow, this regular S video. It's almost like, why go through the, the process of uh, doing an HDMI mod? I mean, it is cool. It's a fun process, but man, it takes a long time. It's easy to mess up. And man, this looks so good with just an unmodified S video signal coming out of the out of the TV into the RetroTINK uh, 4K. Or sorry, out of the 64 into the RetroTINK 4K. Wow, this looks incredible. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm kind of taken away here. Wow, I and I haven't even I haven't even this is an optimized profile or anything. This is just a default profile, you know from the RetroTINK 4K and yeah it just looks amazing I haven't this isn't the you know 64 specific profile or anything and this is just incredible so I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna try to because I'm like pushing stuff on their moan it's just not working because the 64 is blocking the RetroTINK 4K so uh, I'll pause the video and move it real quick all right I moved the RetroTINK 4K down uh, below the 64 so yeah now it seems like it's working better not underneath it but just on another shelf I have back there oh boy wow this is amazing okay so let's <laughs> now let's actually try to do something incredible uh, on here supposedly I'm very skeptical if you see my other videos I have I have too many CRTs really and uh, yeah my wife tells me I need to get rid of them <laughs> or at least get rid of some of them and I have I have gotten rid of rid of some of them, but um, yeah, I just I pick one up sometimes even with the tension to get rid of it, but I just like it too much and I find a spot for it, you know. <laughs> and 
<laughs> I just can't put anything upstairs because, yeah, upstairs is off limits, but yeah, I can <laughs> put stuff in the laundry room <laughs> and stuff, so yeah, that's kind of the happy medium anyway. Uh, yeah, enough of that though. Um, so let's actually try, oh, I don't know, let's see, load from file, uh, let's see here, yeah, see, I'm not, well, yeah, actually, yeah, this should be good. Okay, so let's go down and let's try the Nintendo 64 stuff. Okay, so yeah, so when I was trying this before on the 1080p monitor, um, I was not able to get any of these to work, probably because they're 4K profiles. So, but let's see if they'll work on this TV. So we got Firebrand, RGBS. Well, I'm not using RGBS right now, so. Um, let's see here, basic RGB. Boy, I don't know, I'm not sure. Well, let's just try one, I guess, so I'll just on here I'll have to so this is razor sharp hold on so I think razor sharp is that's when it's the square pixels <clears throat> and then sharp is 4 by 3 I think so I'm gonna go into the sharp since I like the 4 by 3 aspect ratio um, oh look they have deep blur settings on here wow that's cool interesting okay let's try this one I, I'm not sure what this will do but let's just try it Okay, so it says no signal, so yeah. Hmm. Well, I messed something up. <laughs> Let's see here. Maybe it's because it's it's looking for an RGB signal. I wonder if these are, you have to have RGB. It's not meant for S-Video. I could see that. Let's just try this. N64 4x3 fill. Let's see if that does anything. See, it's, it says RGBS, so I'm kind of thinking that it's not going to do anything. So, yeah. I'll have to play around with that more. I do have an RGB, RGB modded N64 as well. So I guess I could pull that out if I really wanted to. Um, let's try this uh, CRT uh, um, emulation though. So, let's see here. Oh, STR optimized. So, yeah, see that's what I'm saying. These Sony TVs do so good with STR. Uh, let's try one of these. I don't know, just, let's just do this first one. Aperture Grill, Course, Grayscale, and Coma, and Gamma uh, Calibrate. Let's see what this does. Yeah, see, it still says no signal. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. It says that it's looking for on the 15 RGBS. Oh, well, that's not the input we want to be on. We want to be on uh, S-Video. So, hold on. Where's the input button? <clears throat> All right. Ah, yes. Ah, okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So that, maybe the N64 profiles would have worked as well if I would have changed the input. Okay, well, let's see what this looks like. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Oh, look at those scan lines. Wow. Wow. Oh. Yeah, you know, the picture is a little dimmer, um, but I like it. Boy, that looks nice. Wow. And I did pick the SDR profile, too. So I wonder if that's modified to uh, compensate for the brightness, because it doesn't really look that dim. It actually, <laughs> actually really does just look like a big CRT. <laughs> I'll, I'll, have to do, uh, I'll have to do another video where I actually set up a CRT by it, although I don't have one that's <laughs> this big. I think the biggest CRT I have is, uh, it's, I mean, it's definitely heavier than this TV. It's a 250 or 60 pound Mitsubishi presentation monitor, <laughs> which is just a beast. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess I could, I don't know. No, I'm not going to be able to get that thing in this room. Oh man, at least not easily. Uh, I don't know, I'll figure out another CRT I can wheel in here and we can do a comparison. But um, yeah, but just looking at this, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, I must say it looks pretty cool. Yeah, and this is just uh, yeah, just just S video, the CRT mask apply applied. Oh, and actually that reminds me. So then supposedly, so there's this gain, auto gain, and auto phase button. So I'm gonna try pushing this. I don't know if it'll work on this profile, but let's see what happens. No, it's not doing anything. So yeah, I'll have to figure out how that works. Boy, on these OLEDs though, yeah, black is black. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like the TV's completely turned off. 
yeah, the CRTs, they have really good black levels too, but where there's still the electron guns are still firing light at the phosphors. Uh, or, 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 well, sorry, they're not... They're blocking most of the light, but a little bit escapes still, and it, like, slightly, very slightly illuminates the phosphors. Whereas these OLEDs, when it's black, it's black. It's, there's no... It's like, yeah, infinite contrast, basically. Wow. Yeah, this profile looks pretty cool, though. Let's see here. Um, I want to try another one now. Um, how do you go back to just turning off the profile? I see it says low default. I guess we could do that, but is there a way to... I guess that's okay. Let's just do that. So low default. This will uh, load the HDMI menu again. Or the HDMI input. So let's go to S video. Yeah, see, yeah, I mean the S video. Let me go to a screen where it's actually stationary. This is like this could potentially be like the ultimate Nintendo 64 setup here because uh, um, not only am I, you know, I have the Retro Team 4K, which can apparently emulate CRTs pretty good, what I've seen. But then I also have. Uh, the blue retro adapter so I could don't to sit close to the, the system and then I have this Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller which, work, which works flawlessly with the blue retro adapter. Even the rumble and the save pack work on it. Um, yeah, so I mean this is just really cool. <laughs> so anyway, let's just go on to this. Uh, let's go in here and just look at these character faces. So like right now this is S video and yeah, it will have the the blur I'm sure that all sixty four games have, unless you turn on the D blur uh cheat like on a game shark. <laughs> um but wow. I I'd have to see a, a back and forth because this looks really sharp. <clears throat> wow, just being scaled up to four K. Um yeah, because I mean two forty P four K divided by two forty I think is nine, right? If I if I'm doing my if I remember correctly, I think it's nine. <laughs> someone check in the in the someone check on the calculator and let me know if it's not nine, but I think it's nine from what I remember. But anyway, it's a it's an integer scaling though, so everything it has the potential to be very sharp, and it's not soft scaling, which you know usually TVs do, uh, or at least most TVs. Um, but yeah, but apparent. I mean. According to what you know, what I've heard, the Retro Tink 4K does nearest neighbor scaling, and yeah, and so then if it's if it's um, if it's a number like 240p up to 2160p, then that is integer. You know, you just times everything by nine. I'm pretty sure it's by nine, but yeah, you just times it. Let's say by nine. Let me someone let me know if I'm wrong on that, but. Yeah, times it by nine, and then you get up to 2160p from 240p, and yeah, everything just looks really sharp. Because otherwise, what happens is, like, if you're trying to go from uh, 240 up to 1080 and fill up the whole screen, then what could potentially happen is, so instead of like having one pixel take up nine pixels on the screen, uh, what what it might do is, I don't know, I'm just I'm just throwing out random numbers. Well educated guesses numbers but like for example on to take make 240 fill up uh, a 1080p screen you maybe would have to fill up like I don't know like 4.5 pixels and so where that where that one pixel is cut in half at least from what I understand uh, that just makes it look not as sharp and yeah just looking at it yeah this definitely looks very sharp I would even say sharper than what I've seen on 1080p on this TV um, because yeah, I also have a, so this is the RetroDem basic mod on this Intel 64. I haven't upgraded to the, uh, the shiny mod, but I'd also have a N64 digital, which, you know, is obviously just unlocked from the install. And yeah, when I installed that and then I tried it, um, yeah, 1080p looks pretty good, but it's not, I mean, this looks better just from going off memory. This looks way better. Um, but anyway, enough rambling. Let's go ahead and... Let's go back and try the CRT profile again because I want to look at the difference here. So 
let's see here, so load from file, and then CRT emulation. I like how they put that at the top. Oh, and there's profile instructions too. Load this profile and press the back button. Okay, where's the back button? Okay, so I'll try it, let's see what happens. And press the back button. After loading a profile for an analog system, press the phase button on the RetroTeam 4K remote and wait until the auto phase is completed. Save the profile. Oh, that's cool. So this just must be the default profile. And then they added that instructions up, instruction thing up there. That's pretty cool. That's a good idea. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I guess that's probably what I was doing wrong then. So I guess let's try that real quick. Let's try the Nintendo 64 filter first before we do the CRT stuff. So I'm going to go back into, I really, I'm really not sure which one is the best, but I think sharp is four by three mode again. So I'll try that. Now I have 320 and then 640. So let's see, 320, I think it's three, I think that's the original in 64. Let's try that one first. Okay, and now I think if we change the input, yeah, see it's trying to read from this card. Okay. <clears throat> so now, profile overview. Huh, maybe these profiles only work for SCART. Yeah, I can see it's saying that it's looking for the SCART input at the top there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure because it doesn't really look that different than what I was seeing before so um, yeah I don't know maybe I would do have to use the my HDMI modded 64 for those well anyway I will still be up in the air I guess whoops I didn't mean to go in there let's try the the CRT profile though again oh actually it did say to push the auto phase button so let's try that Let's see if it does anything on N64. So, so I'm going to push the auto phase. Uh, doesn't seem like it's doing anything. All right. Yeah, I probably have to use my RGB modded 64, I guess. Unless I'm doing something else wrong. And this is just kind of my first time <laughs> trying this stuff out. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Let's go ahead and go into HDMI output again. Whoops, not that. I do want to look at that later, though. Um, let's see here, I meant to go to load from profile, CRT emulation, let's go back down to this SDR stuff. Okay, so let's, I'm going to do this uh, after grill course again. I'm just going to see how it looks. I'm going to look at, let's look at Wario's face. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch over to that. And then of course it's going to want me to change the input again. I wish you would just keep your input. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I do like the effect. It is a little dark though. And I don't even know if I have, I don't think I have black frame insertion uh, turned on on this TV. I think black frame insertion on this TV is under the, I think it's under um, I think they call it like clearness or something on this TV. I can't remember. Oh, brother. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And also, it, yeah, I think it's under clarity. And then, let's see here. Of course, now it's... Oh wait, motion, that's probably what it is. No, cinema motion. Oh yeah, I think it's this one, yeah, smoothness. Oh, I actually did have it on already. So then you can have it on max, two, or one, min. Oh yeah, so I did have it on, yeah, so that actually is making the screen darker. So yeah, so there's the black frame insertion. I think the max is a little bit too much. But I think two is a happy medium. So yeah, I guess I did have that on already. <laughs> and now I lost my source. Now let's go back to N64. Whoops, too far. 
Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It says N64, not Retro Tink. Cool. Well, uh, I'm just kind of curious. Let's try out. Let's try out one of these other uh, profiles here. So, let's go back into the menu, and then let's do load from file, CRT emulation, and then what's this uh, CRT model emulation? Oh. Ooh, wow. Look at that. Look, you can... <laughs> oh, so these are specific models of uh, CRTs. Oh, wow. I wonder if I have any of these. Let's see here. I, think, I don't think I have the GVCs. I, I do have a Sony... Um, I do have a Sony uh, consumer TV that's similar to the FB310. Uh, I actually might know what that one looks like. And I have a Sony, I have two Sony PBMs, but I don't think they're the 2005. And it looks like that you can have BFI, interesting. Oh, and there's even an S SDR one. I used to have a Toshiba CRT as well until uh, when that my, well, it's technically my, well, my friend bought it for me, <laughs> I guess. Okay, well, let's try this one. Let's try this Sony KB3 or FE310. Okay, now it's going to want us to change the input again, I'm sure. Oh, okay. And so now this is HDR. This should be HDR active. So I'm pretty sure that's what it said. It said it was an HDR profile. And actually, I can already tell that this. Um, this uh, this white on the menu is, is actually looks brighter than it did before. So yeah, this must be HDR. I don't see it saying HDR in here though, but let's see. Oh yeah, there it is, yeah. So this is HDR, but yeah, to tell you the truth, it doesn't really look... Yeah, it really doesn't look that much brighter than uh, what I was seeing on the... Um, on the SDR profile. Yeah, again, these Sony's these Sony OLEDs do so good. They have such bright SDR; it just looks excellent. Yeah, again, much better than the LG. At least the LG, I was comparing it with the LG C1 from a few years ago. So maybe LG has gotten better at SDR, but uh, considering how everything's going towards HDR, I kind of doubt it. But um, yeah, but anyway, just comparing this though to my Sony. Oh, what's that model? It's very similar to the FB310. Uh, um, I did a video on it a few weeks ago, too. Um, yeah, this actually looks very similar to that, though. I'll make sure I have game mode on. Oops, not that. Yeah, I always want to make sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and, and the motion looks really good, too. I always want to make sure because sometimes I feel like these settings change on me. Um, but let me just double check one more time to make sure that motion is on. And hopefully it doesn't... Oh, it went to the... Okay, that's okay. Oops, not that picture. And then clarity, no motion. Yep, yeah, it's still on. Okay. Alright, there we go. Cool. Yeah, this definitely, yeah, this definitely looks very similar. Yeah, because that on that Sony consumer TV I have, it's yeah, it does look very similar to this, <laughs> or like the like the black lines. I feel like that. It seems like it still is a little brighter though. But that's the thing with those big TVs; it's really hard to to you know to move around and then try another <laughs> like compare against this TV. I can. It's easy to lug in, you know, small CRTs or even other brands because <laughs> Sony's are just really heavy. Um, but like I have a 32 inch JVC D series, which is actually not too bad to move around. And I did move around the other 32 uh, Sony um, Wagga uh, CRT from like 2006 or whatever. Yeah, I moved that around by myself, but man, that was a beast. It's not something I want to move all the time. Wow, this looks great though. Yeah, the response time feels great too. 
Now I'm curious because before when I was doing that unboxing and initial video, um, initial testing video, I noticed that this Nintendo logo over here was still kind of didn't look the greatest on that TV. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good on this. Oh, uh, going with the CRT filter. Yeah. Yeah, so that Nintendo sign actually does look pretty good. Hopefully the CRT effect is coming up good on the camera too, but um, yeah, I'll just try to tell you the best I can what I'm seeing in real life. But yeah, this, uh, yeah, it does look really good. I'm pretty impressed with this. And again, this is just S video. Slowly S video. Well, not lowly, but yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of curious. Let's see what happens if we switch over to um, HDMI. Let's see where's that. It's a good thing I chose uh, 50 CC so they don't, so the computers aren't ruthless. Oh wow! Holy cow! So, hmm, interesting. So the, wow. I... <laughs> okay, hold on, let me let me just take it back. Let me find the words to explain this to you since you're probably not seeing exactly what I'm seeing. Um, oh boy, how do I say this? It just doesn't look as good as this video. The HDMI does not look as good as this video on this profile. And it might be because I'm piping in a... I have my... Uh, the Retro Gem set to 480p. Um, and that doesn't go into 4K evenly. So, yeah, I think it's like 4.5 times to 4K, if I remember correctly. Um, let's make sure we still have the... Yeah, see, we still have this profile selected. Yeah, the, the scan lines look way better on the S-Video. Yeah. So now I'm kind of curious if we change the RetroTINK... Or not the RetroTINK, the, um, the RetroGem to... Uh, 720p because we should be able to do that on the basic model so let's see here let's go to video um, output resolution and then let's do 720p oh yeah that does look way better okay you want wow except now the the text <laughs> holy cow the the text the the the, the text on the <laughs> wow the text on the retro gem looks really is really hard to read now. <laughs> yeah, so... Okay, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but the scan lines look a lot better when it's set to 720p. Yeah. And actually... No, it's still, it's still doing the square pixels. Yeah, so everything's just kind of squished together a little bit. Yeah, let's, let's switch back over to S-Video and see what that looks like. Oh. Oh, cool. I pushed, uh, held down the brakes and made Donkey Kong stop rolling. Okay. So, I have to remember where this input button is. Okay. Let's go back to this video. Yeah. Yeah, so now it's it's very similar. And that makes sense, too, because... Uh, 240 also goes into 720 evenly, I'm pretty sure. Again, <laughs> check my math on that, but I... Pretty sure it goes in at 720 evenly. Um, yeah, and then 720 goes into uh, 2160 or 4K evenly. And so yeah, I think that I think it's probably just 480p just doesn't work the best with uh, some of these profiles. Would be my guess since it doesn't evenly uh, go into um, 2160p. But yeah. Boy, I really like the way S video looks on this, and then it has the wider aspect ratio too. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep it on S video. Yeah, and it definitely the screen definitely has gotten darker, but yeah, with that black frame insertion on though, yeah, it looks really good. I think from what I remember, and maybe I was misunderstanding this, but I think on that black frame insertion, I think one and two. Is like for 60 frame content, and then I think the max is for 120 frame content. Um, yeah, that's another reason why I wanted to leave it on two because this, all these are going to be 60 frames. Yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, it definitely looks a little dim, but yeah, but it it does have that that look though. Yeah, definitely has that look of <laughs> the Sony consumer TV. So let's go ahead and try out another profile, I guess. Yeah, because supposedly, um, from what I've seen from other reviews, people have been saying that there's a way to, like, have SDR, maybe it's this one, SDR optimized mask, because then you can have, like, because I don't know, this is HDR supposedly, but it doesn't look that bright. <laughs> Maybe if I had a higher-end OLED TV, like a one of the uh, one of the A series OLEDs or whatever, like the A80. Or no, this is the 80J. What are the other ones? Um, oh, like the A90J, for example. Yeah, like the 90 series. Um, yeah, let's just try this one again. So this is an aperture grill again, but it's not based off of a specific model, and this is STR now. Oh, and then of course I have to change the input. I wish it would remember the input. Wow. Yeah, see, that's, that's what I'm saying. This TV does such a good job on SDR. The SDR looks significantly better than the HDR. Yeah, like this looks much brighter. And you still have kind of that, that scan line effect. It's not as pronounced as the, the other profile was, where it was like the specific model I guess but yeah just as far as like having an aperture grill um, yeah this looks pretty convincing uh, I mean it's it's still it's hard to say that it's exactly the same because I don't know there's still something about the CRT look uh, it's hard to it's it's just like a glow that the CRTs have Plus another thing too that I found out real quick when I was uh, trying to <laughs> test the RetroTeam 4K at the beginning. Take that, Wario. <laughs> um, is that unless you have a 4K TV, the RetroTeam 4K didn't necessarily provide that much benefit, especially if you already have an HDMI modded system. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it still would if you're, especially if your TV, uh, if you don't, well, if you don't have an HDMI mod system, and then also if, uh, um, if, like, your TV doesn't have analog inputs as well, then, yeah, I could definitely see where this would be useful. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have a 4K system, then, or a 4K TV, then, I don't know, it, it definitely doesn't have as many benefits, I would say. But yeah, but looking on this screen, this, this looks absolutely amazing, for sure. Um, another benefit, though, still with CRTs, is that, like, they're just smaller, and they're able, like, I know they're, like, they are heavy, but... Like if you get a small one, like even up to like a 20 inch CRT, um, like they're really not that hard to move around. Uh, <laughs> boy, I better I better just change the game because I keep on I keep on losing because I'm talking too much. So I'm gonna go grab another game real quick. Okay, let's do Mario 64. That's an easy game to not lose <laughs> all the time. Okay, now this is interesting. Right now it's it's actually gray here. It's not black, or it should be black. Okay, now it is. Hold on. Let me hit the reset button. Okay, now it's black. Interesting. So the RetroTink 4K must go through like a calibration phrase, phase or something. Because, uh, yeah, I was noticing that before when I was testing it too. Um, yeah, that was weird. It was like it was gray in the background instead of black. Um, yeah, now it's black. So, oh wow, whoo, wow, this looks really nice. Wow, so this is just like a generic aperture grill, I guess. 
so it's not even necessarily a Sony. I guess it could also be like a, a Mitsubishi Dimantron or whatever, which I also, I also have one of those, which is, yeah, really nice monitor as well. But anyway, that's, that's what I was saying before though, is that the, like the CRTs, like since they're smaller, they're a lot easier to move around. I mean, at least compared to like this huge 77 inch OLED TV, like this is basically a huge TV, like CRT where you put it down and you don't ever move it until you actually like change houses pretty much. Um, yeah. Let's see here. I'm going to load up another one of these CRT emulations though. But, um, but yeah. And then also, I don't know. There's still like, there still is just something about, um, CRTs that just, I don't know, I, I'll have to do more comparisons because this does look pretty impressive still. By the way, now this over here, it says HDR optimized mask and scan lines. So I wonder if this will actually make the HDR brighter <laughs> because the other ones were, yeah, see SDR optimized. So I wonder if these are the brighter ones because I tried, this is an SDR optimized right now. Uh, yeah, you can see at the top it says current SDR AG course grayscale. And so I'm going to try one of these HDR optimized and see if these look better. So this actually looks like this exact same one as the SDR. It's just, yeah, an HDR. So let's see what this one looks like. I didn't see any change at all. Oh, wait. Oh, I didn't. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then, of course, I have to change the... Oh yeah, you can definitely tell that's HDR now. Yeah, with the text is much brighter. Oh wow, okay, that does look different. Huh, well, a little different anyway. Wow, I, I still like the, boy, I still like the, I still like the SDR. And I think that uh, black frame insertion is not on right now. As I'm seeing a little bit of blur. So let's go see and check that out. It might be a different setting when you're on HDR. Whoops, I was going to there. Let's go into picture, and then go down to motion. I bet, I bet SDR, yep, sure enough. But can you even turn it on for HDR? Oh, it doesn't let you turn it on. Oh wait, do you have to turn this on? Custom, oh, there it is, maybe. Let's see, it was clearness, yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, there we go, okay. All right, and then this is max. I think two is pretty good. I don't want to turn on smoothless snow because that will add input latency. Okay, so now let's go back. All right, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, you can see the motion blur when the black frame insertion is on. Yeah, this looks a lot better though. But yeah, realistically though, I mean that, boy, that SDR profile actually does look pretty impressive. Yeah, in fact, I, I, I still think that it actually looks better than uh, this HDR. I don't know, I, sometimes I think HDR is just kind of a scam to tell you the truth. Let's try going in here. What I'm gonna do is, this carpet doesn't look as red as I've seen on other CRTs as well. Or this isn't a CRT, but. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't look as red though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back and forth a few times between the HDR and the SDR. And yeah, we'll just kind of see what it looks like. So, so here's HDR and I'm going to switch to SDR. Okay. And here's SDR. Whew, man, SDR looks so much better. Yes. That's what I was saying. It's like HDR is almost like a, it's almost like it's a scam. Like it's a, it's just like a marketing thing where they, they try to say that it's better, but man, like all my testing that I've ever seen, even, even when I had the LG OLED, you know, sitting next to this model, like, I don't know, SDR just looks better. And then LG, the LG TV just made SDR look like really dark and like not what you would usually think of as SDR. Like if anyone has had any experience with, you know, like a CRT or really just any SDR TV, like SDR does not look as dark as what it did on LG, the LG OLED. So it, all, it almost makes me think that LG like makes SDR 
look bad on purpose to like try to push HDR and like how great it is and then you know you always want to like chase the greatest thing and then like upgrade your TV because it has you know higher nits for better HDR or whatever but I don't know I feel like Sony I, I feel like Sony just in general they just try to excel at just about everything they do with TVs um, even going back to like the CRT days um, but yeah, like they didn't, I, I don't know. And this is just, maybe this is just like <laughs> conspiracy theory territory. Um, but I, I just, it just, I just get the vibe that LG maybe is trying to hamper their SCR experience. So to push people towards HDR, whereas Sony is perfect, perfectly happy with making SDR look amazing as well. And actually I think it looks better to tell you the truth. I, yeah. This SDR looks, I would say, looks much better. In fact, even like the colors, like, do you remember what I said about the, let's see, let's go out of here. Hold on. Kosaga. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but leaving like this red carpet, when I first walked in here with the HDR, it didn't look red. It looked like, like a washed out red. Like it looked like the carpet was like old, like, and had been trotted on like <laughs> for many years. Like, it was a very worn-out carpet in this castle, uh, whereas SDR actually looks, like, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, in fact, let me show you again. I'll switch, let's switch back over to HDR and just pay attention to the color of the carpet. Okay, so here's HDR with that same profile. Yeah, just, everything just looks, like, washed out. Like, it just doesn't look that good. And, and see, that's the things I, th I think that HDR, because from what I understand, they, uh, um, sorry, Mario, I'm putting you to sleep with my boring talk. Um, but yeah, it's like HDR. Like, for example, when I pull up this menu, the whites are like very like, wow, this is like very bright. Like all the text in that, like all this text over here is like very bright and it's like almost blinding. <laughs> and so it's like HDR really makes the brights, you know, bright. And then the darks, I guess, dark, you know, on the conversely. But then other colors that aren't white, they just kind of suffer. And that's definitely what I'm seeing here. Like, this this HDR looks so much more washed out than STR. So, like, let me switch back over to STR again. Okay, and here's STR. Yeah, again, just looks, um, yeah, much better. So, yeah, I'm definitely playing with the RetroTink 4K and SDR. At least on this TV, maybe, maybe you're again, I think LG TVs, I think that they probably, well, yeah, considering how, at least this, at least the C1 that I was testing, considering how poor performance it had on SDR, I think HDR probably would be an upgrade on that specific TV. Um, but yeah, if you have a Sony TV, definitely try out or SDR because uh, yeah, it looks pretty amazing. Anyway, let's go ahead and try out one of these other uh, profiles before we finish up this video. Um, yeah, again, I'll have to, I'll play around with this more and try to find more optimized stuff, but, and then also, you know, I'll compare with the actual CRTs as well. Cause yeah, I mostly, most of the TVs that I use nowadays are CRTs. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. And I don't know, it's, it, there's still something special about CRTs. Like especially just like a little one that you know just looking at it, it's just like it just glows like it just is i don't know there is something special about it and even like before i was doing this i was watching a movie on uh on my uh xbr 960 uh hd crt a sony trintron and uh it was just breathtaking really um yeah, and then I actually came in here, like I said before, and then I started cleaning up this room, and I put that same movie on this TV. And, like, it looked nice, it looked sharp, but it wasn't breathtaking. And it's hard to explain, but I think it has something to do with the colors that the CRTs can reproduce. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it was just, like, everything just seemed to pop out of that HD CRT, whereas on, on this TV, it didn't necessarily pop out on that movie <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to say exactly what it is but um, yeah there there is something about CRTs still that are pretty impressive but as far as emulating them though I mean yeah this this does look pretty amazing 
Um, so anyway, so that was, so we've looked at this course, I think, plenty. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and try out one of these, some of these other profiles. So let's try this uh, uh, Aperture Grill Dense. I wonder what that looks like. Of course, it's going to make me switch inputs again. I really wish it would just uh, keep your input. Oh, wow. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, I actually kind of like this one better. So yeah, so I think dense, I think it moves the scan lines. Yeah, so it must move the scan lines, uh, or it makes the black lines in between the scan lines smaller. That's what it is, yeah. And actually it kind of brightens up the image a little bit too, which I guess would make sense. Whoa. Well, I just turned Mario around and then, okay, there we go. Not sure what happened there. Lost the uh, connection there for a second, but uh, we're back. I didn't pause the camera either. That was just kind of weird. I'm not sure what happened, but yeah, yeah this looks good though. Oh, I didn't want to go into this menu. Oh, wow. My uh, controller just lost connection. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you do lose connection on these wired wireless controllers. At least with the Nintendo ones. But usually not. At least not with this uh, adapter that I have. But yeah, this looks pretty good though. Yeah. And again, these are just the profiles that are, you know, that just come out of the box, you know, from the, just the, for, or just the 1.0 firmware. Just right out of the box. And, uh, yeah, looks pretty good though. I shouldn't have gone into this level. I should have gone into a different one. Let's try this door. Yeah. yeah, looks pretty cool. Let's try out another. Let's try out another profile though. Let's see here. So profiles, load from file, CRT emulation. Let's try one that looks different. So what's RYB Aperture Grill RYB? Hmm. I don't know. Mono. Is that like black and white? Oh, a slot mask. Ooh. Oh, and they have a triad. Ooh, that's like an old. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, man. That's like an old CRT from like the 70s or whatever. Wow, let's try out that. Oh, there's two of them here. What's the difference? Triad course. Oh, it's triad course and triad dance. Dense. Ah, okay. Yeah, let's try the dense one. This is exciting. And then I guess people will just keep on, you know, making new profiles. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I tell you the truth, it looks pretty similar to the Aperture Grill, at least from this far away. Let's see if we get closer and see if we can see those triad. That's so cool that it if it really does have the triad on here. Okay, so I'm oh wow it does. Look at that. Yeah, you can actually see the triad. Um the holes like in the phosphor. Wow, that's cool. I mean, you have to, it's kind of crazy. You have to be pretty close. But yeah, they're there. Wow, they're probably not coming up on the camera though, but uh, maybe they're right if I hold it this close. But yeah, can you see the triads? <laughs> that's so cool. Wow, like the, <laughs> wow, that's a lot of detail to really uh, recreate that CRT look. Wow, that's, boy, that's impressive. That's impressive stuff right there. Wow. <laughs> Boy, that's uh, see, that's the power of 4K. Wow, for sure. Power of 4K to reproduce a, a CRT. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Wow, now I'm curious. I wanna, I'm want i going to switch back over to uh, well, keeping the camera kind of close to the screen. I'm going to switch back over to uh, um, the Aperture Grill. And let's see what that looks like. I'll pause the video while I switch the profile. Okay, so here's the the aperture go again. Yeah. Oh wow! Holy cow! This is a this is incredible. Holy cow! Wow! It really does look like an aperture grill when you're. I mean, sure, I have to <laughs> to get like two feet away from the from the screen, but yeah, I mean. I mean, you'd have to get this close on a, a regular, you know, CRT aperture grill as well. But uh, wow, this is impressive. 
and it really does look different from the triad oh wow yeah it really does look like an after grill <laughs> wow that is amazing i can't believe that he was able to get this to work wow that this is absolutely incredible holy cow wow this is amazing this is absolutely amazing oh wow holy cow <laughs> Oh man, now, oh boy, okay, yeah, oh wow, and again, this is just S-Video coming in here. And now that I am this close, I do see a little bit of the analog noise, too, by the way. I don't see it when I'm far away, but um, yeah, in fact, I'm kind of curious. Let's switch over to HDMI and see if that noise goes away. I bet it will. Yeah, it did. Nice. Wow. Um, actually, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there a little bit, so maybe that's not analog noise. Maybe that's just part of the picture. I'm not sure. Huh, or maybe it's part of the CRT mask. But actually, this, uh, the Aperture Grill, I mean, it's still there when it's on HDMI mod, or when it's on the, yeah, on the HDMI mod. Um, let me see if I can, like, zoom up the camera a little bit. Let's see if it focuses. Okay, there we go. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> the camera just... Well, yeah, the camera sure focused on that. That camera's focusing on a lot more than what I can see with my eyes, but okay, whatever. Um, I guess it'll give you a good idea of what this looks like. So, yeah, I'm going to switch back over to um, S-Video here. You can see what this looks like. So, yeah, I, I just think S-Video looks a little bit more realistic on this mask. Wow. Oh, so much for doing those HDMI mods. <laughs> and they're still cool, though. I mean, yeah, and I'm sure people, some people will prefer the look the super sharp look of the HDMI, um, but yeah, I, I kind of like this, uh, <laughs> this look of the, yeah, S-Video. Man, I mean, look at this. Look at, look at this, the detail of this Aperture Grill recreation. This is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay, I'm going to switch back over to the triad thing when it's, uh, this close, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and here are the, this is the triad course profile. And yeah, you can see, I don't know, it's probably, this actually doesn't look, well, you can still see it on the camera, I guess, but yeah, boy, this, yeah, this definitely does look like a, I, I, it's, it's kind of weird though, because it's like the, the triad configuration actually looks like, it's like it's too small and maybe it's just because the triad TVs that I've always had, um, like they maybe they just weren't the highest quality, <laughs> like they didn't have the the greatest dot pitch or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is just like a little bit too small. I don't know, but it still looks cool, especially when you're looking at it this close. But I mean, yeah, this is absolutely incredible. Yeah, all the pixels you can see the yeah the individual triads. <laughs> it's so amazing. This is like absolutely this is absolutely mind blowing how this looks. See if I can get you on a, a different area of the screen so you can see more colors. Yeah, this looks so cool. Wow. wow this is uh, this is really cool. But to tell you the truth, though, when you're when I'm seeing far away, it's hard to tell uh, a difference between the aperture grill and the um, and the triad <laughs> mass or the um, what do you call it? Or just like the triad. Uh, versus the aperture grill. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's, let's go ahead and switch over to, I'm curious to see what the shadow mask looks like. So I'm going to load that up real quick. Or no, actually it says a slot. Maybe that's what I was thinking. I guess triad, maybe triad is a shadow mask. I guess that would probably be a shadow mask too. But this is a slot. It says slot medium. So there's slot dense, slot medium, and slot coarse. Um, Let's see, this is still the triad. I'm going to try slot coarse. No, actually, let's do dense. Okay, I'll change the input again. Oh, okay. This looks... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can tell it's not the... Yeah, it's different from the triad. Yeah, it's yeah the pixels are just uh, or the well I guess they're well, 
what you call it? Well, they're not really, I mean, it's a digital panel, so they're still pixels, but the dots or like the holes that they're trying to represent are, are uh, patterned in a different way. Like they're more, like they're more straight. They're more up and down straight, whereas the triad um, was a, yeah, a little different. Um, yeah, they're more offset. But yeah, this looks really cool though, too. Yeah. Yeah, but again, from far away, they all look pretty similar. <laughs> but yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, back up again. Let's see if I can fix the zoom. There we go. So yeah, from this far away. Yeah, go in between the, like, so now this is the, uh, what was it? <laughs> Man, I'm really putting Mario to sleep. <laughs> like, literally putting Mario to sleep. I hope that people watching this video aren't being put to sleep as well. I mean, I find it fascinating, but I guess, you know, probably not everyone finds it fascinating. But, uh, yeah, Mario probably just wants to go and, you know, stomp on Ko uh, Goombas and defeat Bowser. Um, but yeah, I'm, <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. Sometimes it's funner to fiddle with this stuff than it is to actually go and, uh, <laughs> actually play the game. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and try. I'm just kind of curious if we change this. Uh, so right now we're on slot dense. So I'm going to change the aperture to real dense. Let's see if we can tell a difference from this far away. So I'm going to pause the video while it changes. Okay. Yeah, it looks really similar from this distance. Um, yeah, it looks very similar. So, yeah, I would almost say that whichever one you like, whichever one you have, it's, they're all pretty similar. Um, but yeah, I guess while we're here, though, let's go ahead and try uh, one of these other ones. Let's see here. So let's go back here. Aperture grill RYB. I'm not sure what that is, but let's give it a try. Um, and of course, we got to change the input. Oh, okay. This one I actually can see a difference from this far away. It's hard to put my finger on exactly what the difference is. Oh, okay. Ah, interesting. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so it's like the, it almost looks like the vertical scan lines are maybe a bit, or like the black lines in between the vertical scan lines are maybe a bit more pronounced, I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, it does look a little different though. Yeah, I'm like, this is breaking up a bit more. It's it's like the, you know, it kind of reminds me, it kind of reminds me of the difference between a super fine pitch tube and just a regular pitched tube like on the HD CRTs. It's almost like the other one was more like a super fine pitched, even though it's not labeled that, whereas this one is maybe not super fine pitched. That's what it kind of reminds me of. But let me switch back over to the regular one. Okay, so here's the regular Aperture Grill uh, course profile. And yeah, it just looks, uh, yeah, it just seems like the slots I like the lines are a little bit closer together, so yeah, just a bit more detail can be represented. Yeah, I actually kind of like it, but the other one looks cool too, though. I mean, sometimes it's kind of cool to not have like the the most like all the details showing up. Like it's kind of it's kind of weird to say, but it's kind of uh, part of the look to have some of the detail not there and having more of the mask come through. So yeah, I could definitely see a. I think there's a place for everything. And of course I left the control over here. Cool. All right. Well, let me, uh, I'm going to plug in one more game real quick. We'll try one more and yeah, do some final thoughts. Okay. Super Smash Brothers. Okay. Let's do this. Let's see if I can get my controller to sync. Oh wow, the controller sync let's just watch this. <laughs> yeah, this looks pretty convincing. Yeah. 
this is definitely the way to go. And it looks so much better too, um, like, than just like having the 64 like just upscaled. Um, yeah, this looks really nice, I must say. Yeah, this mask is definitely the way to use this um, machine. And I'm having, this controller must be low on battery or something, I'm having problems having to sync. Alright, we're gonna have to use a different controller. Well, I'll just let you watch this for a second <laughs> while I plug in a different controller. Now, actually, for the last, for this last little bit, let's actually try out a different profile. Keep on forgetting that I have to plug, or I have to point the remote over on the to the right of me instead of to the at the TV. <laughs> let's see here. It'd be cool if I could uh, control this menu with the Sony remote. If there's like arc support for the RetroTink 4K, because um, yeah, because that the Sony remote actually can control most everything else connected to my TV. It even controls the Apple TV, believe it or not. So yeah, I don't even have to use the Apple TV remote. I just use my Sony remote for everything. Um, but yeah, I don't mind using the RetroTink 4K remote. It is really nice. It just, uh, yeah, would be cool to use the Sony remote as well. But yeah, anyways. Uh, let's see, what am I trying to do? Load from file, CRT emulation, and then this SDR stuff is where the gold is, is buried. Um, we already tried, let's try this, we haven't tried this mono, this mono stuff yet. Let's try mono medium. Let's see what that looks like. Hmm. Huh. I don't know what this is. Boy, some of these, it's almost like you have to get really close to the screen to see what's going on. Hmm. Huh, I don't I haven't recognized this kind of mask before. I don't think I've seen this on any of the CRTs I have. And I don't see like the the red, green, and blue uh holes either. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting, mono. Huh. That's uh very interesting. Hmm. Maybe it's I wonder if mono is where because mono means like one, right? And so I wonder if it's like there's only one, like there aren't the three colors, there's just the one color. I wonder if that's what it is, because yeah, I only see one color in there. That's interesting. I have never seen a CRT like that before. Not to say they don't exist, I just haven't seen one. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Let's see here, load default, load from file. Yeah. I think this model in uh, <laughs> recreation stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, just kind of curious. Let's see what the Sony PVM 20L5 looks like. Let's go to the character selection screen. Okay, so I'm going to look at this and let's see if it gets a lot darker. Ah, input. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably because the it's the HDR, but uh, yeah, this it just looks a lot more washed out than the other ones. Yeah, the scan lines are really thick though, the black lines in between the scan lines. But um, yeah, it's, wow, yeah, this compared to the SDR profiles, yeah, it's like night and day difference. This looks yeah so washed out. Yeah, I I wouldn't recommend this these HDR profiles unless you're maybe if you have like a Samsung TV. Um, that isn't an OLED. I think those can get super bright. Maybe HDR would look better. I don't know. It's weird though because there, there's something. SDR looks way brighter on this TV than HDR. Um, let's see. Let's try this one. I haven't tried this one yet. YMC. It's like YMCA. Pick the aperture grill. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ooh, I like the look at this one. Ooh, this looks nice. Yeah, definitely better than the HDR. Let's see what this looks like close up. This is supposedly is an aperture grill. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, interesting. Wow. Yeah. I like this look. Yeah, I could go for this. Let's go ahead and play with this one a little bit. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Look, it even shows where, like, the... It, it, it actually does look like that there's, like, light being drawn across the screen. Wow. Yeah, because you can see that it kind of, like, the colors kind of bleed over, too. And I don't know if that's necessarily the S-Video. But it definitely looks like a CRT. <laughs> wow, that's pretty impressive, yeah, I must say. Okay, cool. Well, let's play with this profile a little bit. Okay. Actually get some gameplay in. Not put Mario to sleep. Here, Mario, I'll give you another chance. Good time. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting to put away that menu. Go away. Ah, yeah, this looks cool. Oh, I'm gonna plug in the rumble pack. I'm using the wired controller now. There we go. Now to get that good rumble. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh wow, you can grab people in this game when they're... Uh, when they're before they hit the ground, they stand up. Huh? I don't think you can do that in Ultimate. Getting the tornado. I always know where the items are. I got it first. Take that. Yeah, this looks really impressive. Really authentic, yeah. Yeah, and again, with the, without the scan lines, it definitely looks brighter than, like, without the CRT mask. But, um... Yeah, this looks very nice though with the CRT mask. It looks very authentic too, and it just kind of smooths over all the graphics. Yeah, it really looks like you have a like a huge CRT basically. So now I'm gonna switch back over to the non. I'm just kind of curious just to remember what it looks like without the CRT mask. So I'm gonna switch back over to that real quick. Okay, and here's the default profile test video. Yeah, it's definitely brighter, but yeah, it definitely doesn't look like a CRT anymore. <laughs> let's just let's just kind of play around with this for a little bit. Wow. Yeah, like even the background, I feel like in see like you can really see the like Mario's like the pixels around Mario as well. And like even like the background, like the Yoshi story background, I've actually never noticed this before. Um, but like you can really see, like, I don't know, the texture stuff. <laughs> like it really doesn't look like you can see like these lines in the background. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be part of the, the look. But I personally haven't noticed that before and I don't think it really looks that good. Yeah, you definitely don't see that when it's the when you're on a CRT. Yeah, and Mario looks very pixelated too. And I, I'm sure if I'm sure if you were you know emulating this, you can probably uh, play it at higher than 240p, and so it, Mario may not look as pixelated. Um, there's probably a hack to it. <laughs> to have it uh, not be as pixelated, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, it definitely doesn't look like a CRT, like where everything is smooth. So now let's let's switch back over to a CRT uh, filter. Okay, and here's the uh, the Triad Coarse filter again. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely darker, but boy, it, yeah. I wish that I wish it could be brighter and then also um, like still have this effect because yeah, everything just looks so much better with this effect on. I just wish it were a little bit brighter. Because, yeah, that is something, like, even, like, uh, yesterday, I think it was, I was playing on, uh, 
on a Sony uh, um, Sony computer uh, consumer CRT from like 1995, I believe. And yeah, just like the TV was like so bright and like everything just looks so awesome on it. Just like a 20 inch little you know, CRT TV. And yeah, this kind of looks like it. I mean, it definitely does look like it. Um, besides it being, you know, <laughs> shadow mask and, beside, uh, and not a aperture grill, but, um, but yeah, I mean, but the brightness on that little CRT was just very impressive. Um, but still, I mean, after seeing here for a while though, like even just like right now, like your eyes like do get used to it. And like, especially, you know, if you haven't seen something, because right now I'm in, you know, basically a pitch black room besides the, the TV being on. And so, yeah, with that, I mean, yeah, your eyes get used to it. And like your, um, what do you call it? Your, uh, I can't think because Fox is beating me. He's using my distraction to get me out. <laughs> it's not fair. But, uh, yeah. Stop it, Fox. That's not fair. I'm trying to explain something. Your eyes <laughs> get smaller. I can't think of the word right now because Fox is being rude. Yeah, anyway, your eyes get used to the, the darker screen is what I'm trying to say. And then, like, since your eyes do change, um, your pupils dilate. That's what I'm trying to say. So they, so they un, or no, yeah, they dilate when it's a, di when it's a dark, um, when you're in a dark area. Oh, that was a bad idea. Um... And so when they dilate, then they actually let in more light. And so then you're like, what's around you will actually look brighter and your eyes adjust for it. And so like after looking at this screen for a while, it actually appears brighter than what it actually, than what it looked like before when I had the, when I was comparing it with the non SDR or the non uh, mask content. I mean, the non mask, uh, filter or I don't know the non filter <laughs> you know what I mean but anyway yeah but like right now since I've been playing like this for a little bit yeah it's like it does look pretty bright again so yeah and I'm sure if I uh, if I do uh, um, turn on the like or if I turn off the CRT mask then yeah again it will get brighter and then I'll be like oh wow yeah this is way brighter but, but yeah again once you're playing like this for a while you yeah your eyes adjust to it so yeah I definitely think this is the way to go and TVs will you know I'm sure they'll just keep getting brighter and brighter and uh, yeah yeah this this does look really nice oh the the Mario Brothers but Wario has uh, Lu or Luigi has betrayed me he's, and he's, uh, he's ganged up with Wario. That's so... Ah, I can't believe it. How could you, Luigi? You're supposed to be my true brother, but now you... Oh, well. At least you got Fox out. Rock Fox is a jerk. Oh, Luigi, come on. Come on, man. You're supposed to be my true brother. Oh, brother. Two. Oh, wow. A <laughs> bee drill and Kaflare and Kaferi drill. Wow. And you guys. Talk about cheap. Oh, come on, Luigi. Oh my goodness. Wow, Luigi. Got my first life away. Hey guys, come up here, let's play with the let's play with the red shell. Oh. Come on, Wario. Man, Luigi. Can at least be a little bit nice like Wario. He's not hitting me all the time. Here, get out of here, Wario. I need to fight my brother on his own merit. Ooh. Hey, Luigi, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> Take that. Yeah, this does look really cool, though. Okay. 
Cool. While well, I'm curious, I'm going to switch over to, I want to try another one of these profiles again. Let's see what other ones are on here. Go from file, CRT emulation. Yeah, the CRT emulation stuff is definitely the way to go. Um, let's see here. What else is here? BFI, optimized mask, and scan lines. See, I don't know what that would be because would that mean that it would start to output? Because if it's BI, BS, I do have BFI turned on. I wonder, hmm, let's see what this looks like. I wonder if this will compensate if you have BFI turned on under TV. Let's see what it looks like. Oh no, this looks really bad. <laughs> yeah, like the colors are, yeah, once again, I think it's the HDR. I mean, sorry, it doesn't look really bad, but it doesn't look nearly as good as uh, the SDR profile. So yeah, I'll turn the, put this away as, as soon as possible. <laughs> okay, let's go, yeah, so let's see, yeah, we already tried this one. CRT model emulation. I guess we could try another one of these. I, I want to, oh man, I wish these model emulations were on the SDR, uh, like optimized profiles as well. And maybe, maybe they'll do updates. Let's see what this one looks like. Whoops, not composite. Oh, wow. That's cool. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that. So when you pick composite and you have S video, it just takes the Luma signal. And it, and it just uh, ignores the chroma. Oh, that is cool. That is so cool. Wow. That is cool. But yeah, it's still, but the HDR still doesn't look as good as SDR. Yeah. Mm, that's too bad. Oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. Ah, no, stop. Go back. Go back. What did I do? Okay. So I'm just going to pick a profile. I know I can... No, 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 stop. Not the default profile, though. <laughs> I'm going to pick one of these and I'm not going to change it all the time because yeah, this is like a, a tweaker's paradise. There's so much stuff you can change in here and I haven't even got to all the uh, interpolation stuff and the pre-scaling. Like if you're doing like a switch content, I'll have to do another video on that where I try all that out. I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about that. <laughs> yeah, I watched that My Life in Gaming uh, video like... I watched like just the pre-scaling part, like maybe three or four times, maybe five times just to try to take it all in. And yeah, it seems pretty awesome what uh, they were able to do with the pre-scaling stuff. So yeah, I'm super excited about trying the horizontal, uh, saying the, trying stuff with, that has good horizontal interpolation and then pre-scaling to like 270p or 240p, depending on the circumstance. And yeah, I'd, I'd applying these masks and stuff. Yeah, that should be really cool. Um... Yeah, let's try. I actually haven't tried. Let's see here. Okay, so we did course before. I haven't tried the triad dense. Let's do this one. Oh, yeah, this looks pretty. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, now I know why the triad, those little triad things are so small. It's because it was coarse. So now dense, because see, I can actually see it when I'm seeing that far away. Oh, no, they're still pretty small. I'm not sure what I was seeing. Hmm. It still is pretty impressive, though, yeah. So I think the coarse, I think coarse versus dense is just how how big the the black lines in between the scan lines are. So, yeah, I think that they're bigger now. In fact, let's just double check. I generally like to have smaller uh, black lines, especially probably now with like on this OLED because I think the smaller black lines would probably make the image a little brighter. So let's switch back over to this one. Let's see. So this is triad dense. Let's go over to triad coarse. Pause the video while I switch it. Hmm. Yeah, I think the scan lines are a little smaller or I guess bigger and then the black lines are smaller. Ah, I keep pushing the wrong button. I'm used to the pack button being where that, uh, where the like the magnifying glass is, because on the Sony remote, that's where the back button is. Yeah, I like this. I like this. Though. I think this looks good. Oh, and by the way, I guess another thing I can do is I can make sure that the make sure that my um, OLED brightness is up. Let me go over here. Okay, 
here, Pikachu. You got yourself out while I uh, mess around with these settings. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, wait. Oh, it's a smart Pikachu. Oh, wow. Usually Pikachu would get himself out if he's... Oh, wow. This is a smart Pikachu. He's gotten smarter. He's gotten smarter because uh, I'm using the Retro Team 4K. Wow, Pikachu. You're not going to let me uh, change these settings, really? Come on, Pikachu. Oh, I have the light center on. I can see it. I can see the light center sending. I need to turn it off. Yeah, go over there and get the item. This is giving me time to turn this off. Oh, it is off. Never mind. Yeah, I can see the light center. The light sensor, that does make the screen darker. So yeah, I definitely want to have that off. Auto picture mode. I want that on. Power saving. Yeah, see, if you have this on, that really makes the, the picture brighter or darker. See, I actually think I have it looking pretty good. Okay, Pikachu, you're going to get yourself out. Now you're going to go get that bomb. Okay, yeah, I think I do have it. Yeah, see, and then brightness is set to max. Yeah, I already have the right settings. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, come on, Pikachu. You almost got yourself out. Ah, Pikachu. Oh, my goodness, Pikachu. You've gotten so smart since we're using the Retro Team 4K. There we go, finally. <laughs> I, knew if I, st I knew if I stood over here long enough, he'd eventually get himself out. Yeah, it looks like I have the brightness turned up pretty good on this. I wonder if there are... There might be more brightness settings, but these are the ones that I usually turn on. So yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really had the need to update this TV because I mean I could go for like the you know like the five thousand dollar model of like the ninety series like the L ninety L or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a little bit too much money. <laughs> and, okay. Um, but yeah, and then there really hasn't been a need to. Uh, update the like to the other models either because they're like the 80 models like the a80k or adl um, that came out after this one they've they're base they're almost exactly the same as far as like oh how come dk got the cool pokemon oh come on dk oh no not that does anyone like to use the fire power against me? Yeah, DK is have a run now. Yeah. Yeah, just okay, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, come on, DK. Oh, where did he go? Oh, it disappeared. Of course my teammates were useless. They were just trying to get out. But yeah, this TV, as far as the stats go, uh, yeah, are really good. And they're still good. Oh, hey, DK. Uh, yeah, hey, come over here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, hey, there's another one. Hey, DK, I got a surprise for you. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, my goodness, wow. This DK is smart. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, you're not getting this. I'll take that. Oh no, 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 not the M. No, no, no. Oh, at least it wasn't the heart. Ah, DK. This is not fair. Wow. I need that. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Pokemon. Get out of here. <laughs> nice. Okay. Still wasn't fair, but it was uh, fair towards me and not towards him, so that's okay. Yeah, this looks cool, though. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
yeah, I, oh, oh, yeah, I'm very curious to see, to see how this compares, because, yeah, right now, since I've had just had it on this slot mask for a while, and, like, just, like, actually playing the game and not trying to, oh, it's Mario versus DK, how can, how, uh, interesting. But yeah, since I've just been, like, you know, play, actually playing the game and not, like, tweaking stuff, it actually, like, looks, like, significantly brighter than what it looked like before. And so, yeah, this looks really nice. Man, and boy, this, this does not look like 240p. I mean, it does look like 240p, but it doesn't look like what I'm used to towards 240p looking like on this TV. <laughs> Because, yeah, my other methods of scaling to this TV have been good. Like, the Super 64 is actually pretty good, especially when it's, like, compared with the M Classic. Um, so, and, like, with the smoothing feature, it actually does look pretty impressive, but this is just on, like, a whole other level with the CRT emulation. Yeah, I'm really impressed with how how much detail there is on this uh, 4K TV. Because, yeah, usually, <laughs> believe it or not, like, most of the stuff that I watch on this TV is not in 4K. Oh, come on. Okay. Ah. Even if I get out, then I'll have to put on survive. Thanks. Thanks, Snorlax. Oh, it's a regular turn? Wow. Hmm, let's see, should I come down right now and Pikachu Kirby's invincible or should I wait till his invincibility runs out? Yep, I waited. Yeah, the 64 is such an awesome system by the way. Oh wait, that's not that's not Kirby Kirby, that's Jigglypuff Kirby. Hey, look what I have. Oh come on. There we go. <laughs> Nice. Kirby ranks. Oh wow, I wasn't even trying to get that, but uh, I guess I got it. Well, I was trying at the beginning, but then I, <laughs> yeah, I kind of forgot about it. But yeah, that's cool. I got it anyway. Yeah, this looks really nice. This definitely looks like, like how I remember this game as a kid too. Yeah, I'm just like playing it on. You know, Samus, the definition of. Uh, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting uh, different results. That's literally what you're doing. You're just letting me hit you with fireballs. Okay, now you're changing, but yeah. For a second there, you were going insane. Oh. Still your money. By the way, there's a really cool website, which last I checked is actually still live, but it's like from the 90s. It's a, it's a website that, we, uh, that I used to use when I was a kid. And it's called NintendoCC.com. Nintendo, it stands for Nintendo Code Center. And yeah, there's a bunch of like old, <laughs> really cool, um, just like old codes and like cheats for like these games, like old like games. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's and like the website is like, you can definitely tell that it was like a 90s website. <laughs> but um, it's funny because on the Super Smash Brothers, it, it was just like, they were just like codes that like anyone could submit, almost like a Wikipedia uh, type of thing. But, um, but yeah, it was on the Super Smash Brothers entry. It um it has a bunch of oh wow man super it has like a bunch of like hey if you wanna like these are like different like game ideas of how you can play the game and it was just like you know us kids back then I didn't ever I don't I didn't ever submit a code I don't think but uh, it was just like you know kids back then 90s kids you know submitting stuff of, like this is a cool way to play and so like they would say like like the ultimate brothers match you know and have like Yellow Mario versus Red Mario versus Luigi, you know, like who would win, you know, and just stuff like that. It's actually a pretty cool website. I definitely uh, recommend. Maybe I'll do another video showcasing it. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, surprised that it's still live, but I'm really glad it is. Wow. And Mario. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> 
definitely recommend it. Definitely a 10 out of 10 website. I want to at least finish the classic mode before I finish this video, even though this video is kind of long. Yeah, the CRT emulation does look really cool though. Yeah, so this is definitely because the thing about because it's it's kind of it's kind of tricky because like there's a lot of times when I want to take this here or I want to take the 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 64 over to people's houses, but then it's like it's, there just isn't like an easy way nowadays to just have it look amazing on anyone's TVs. And so now that I have the Retro Team 4K, and since most people nowadays, even like most people have a 4K TV, most of the people that, that I've mostly seen, like 4K is, I remember when it first came out and it was kind of like, wow, like when is this ever going to come down in price? But now, like when I went to Walmart the other day, like all the TVs were 4K, even like the least expensive ones. I think there might have been one. 1080p TV, but like that was definitely the exception, not the rule. And even that TV was like uh, like pretty much the same price as some of the other 4K TVs, and so it was like, why go with that TV? And what I really need is just to get him off the stage, and then you won't be able to jump back up. Oh, there we go. Oh, so close. There we go, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> so yeah, I think I I think that most people have upgraded 4K by now. Not everyone. I definitely know at least a few people that don't have a 4K TV. Um, but I think most people that I know have updated to a 4K TV. Even if they still have older TVs too. Um, they at least have one 4K TV. So yeah, when I take the if I take the 64 and then the retro tink over to their house, then yeah, then I can always have a cool experience. And yeah, say <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> this is the way this, these games are supposed to look. Of course, if they have a CRT TV, then I'll just say, hey, can we use your CRT TV? <laughs> Because, yeah, that, of course, will always provide an excellent experience. Although, one thing I am really liking about this, though, is that the the convergence, like, there aren't any convergence issues. Just everything is perfect. Which, I don't know, I guess it can be a good or a bad thing. There definitely is a place for having, I don't know, I guess having bad convergence is almost kind of the experience as well. Oh, whoops, I didn't do that. So yeah. Oh man, this got the the ultimate item. This is bad. Oh no. I think Mario, by the way, is like secretly the best character in the game. I used to think it was Link, but uh, yeah, I think it's actually Mario. At least in this one. I don't think he's the best in the, like all of the Smash Brothers, but yeah, I think at least in this one he's the best one. Yeah, like he has pretty good jumping, and yeah, like it's very easy to recover, at least compared to Link. No, no, no! Don't not pick up that. Oh, brother, he got the fan. Like I would not have been able to make that with Link. <laughs> oh, come on, Donkey Kong. Has a fan? Yes, he, he cannot be. He cannot be permitted, be permitted to use that fan. Now, Smash Remix, on the other hand, I don't know if he's the best character, but definitely my favorite character would be uh, Bowser. I think that's such a cool character in Smash Remix, just because he's like, <laughs> like he really looks like and sounds like the Mario 64 Bowser. It's just like. So awesome! I would have absolutely loved having that as a character um, on this Super Smash Brothers 64 as a kid. Yeah, I mean, 
I guess I, yeah, I can enjoy it now and it still is like super cool. So yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay if it didn't happen when I was a kid because it happened now. Let's see who gets blown up. Oh, it was Jigglypuff. Or was that Kirby? No, I think that was Jigglypuff. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to be down there, Samus. Yeah, I just love the 64. It's so awesome. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Yeah, it's clobbering time now, guys. Come back here, Fox. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, I forgot to do the taunt. Scary, the master head. Yeah, see right now, it looks plenty bright. But yeah, there's still something about the CRT though, because even, ah, man. Yeah, see, I was, I was, I was like, kind of like cautiously optimistic. I don't know if I want to say optimistic, but I was like, wow, maybe this will finally be the thing that like convinces me to actually start like getting rid of like a massive number of my CRTs. Um, but I just don't know if it will be. Yeah, the CRTs are still just like a very unique experience. And I think the Retro Team 4K definitely is helping. Like, I am like pretty blown away still, like how awesome it looks. Um, and like the input lag feels great as well. Like this TV has excellent input lag as, um, yeah, like, and so then, yeah, paired with this, it's, yeah, just really great experience. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. The CRTs, though, are still just, like, very special. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to get rid of them right yet. <laughs> but maybe, I don't know, it might be, like, the... I know Mike Chi has mentioned this, too, but it might be the, uh, like, just, like, the... The, um... Uh, like, the shortcomings of our TVs right now with OLED... And so, like, once TVs start to get brighter and brighter, then, yeah, then maybe some of these, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Some of these, uh, no, oh, that was dumb. <laughs> some of these, uh, uh, shortcomings will go away with time. Yeah, as TVs get brighter and brighter. Yeah. I do find it funny though that we're trying to um, recreate the CRT experience, <laughs> and so like we need like expensive scalers like the Retro Team 4K to recreate the CRT experience. By the way, I think this game has borders. Oh, what? No way! This this credit scene is 480i. Wow! I just said it switched to 480i. I see. I've never noticed that before. Watch, and then when we go back, it'll, I'm sure it'll switch to 240p. Yeah, see, now it just switched to 240p. Huh. Wow, so they, they, they put the... Oh, that's so cool. See, I never noticed the switch before, because on uh, on uh, CRT it was instantaneous. And actually, it was it was instantaneous on the, the RetroTing 4K, too. Like, it just... The only way I knew that it changed was because it... It, it said it. And I really like that it says that it changes resolution, too. That's really cool. Yeah. And actually, I'm noticing there's a border on this game. Because I know um, there's actually... It's really hard to tell because uh, one thing I really like about OLEDs is that everything just kind of blends into the background. So like, like the black bars, because since this is a 4K or a 4x3 game, um, the black bars over here... On the OLED, they just blend away and like you don't notice them. Um, but actually, now that I'm looking at it, let's see if I can see it better if I turn on the flash. Oh yeah, yeah. So this game does have a board around it, and I'm sure that's the way it is on the CRT as well. Um, but yeah, I actually didn't even notice because the black levels are so good on the OLED. Yeah, but yeah. There are 64 games that have uh, a border on the top and bottom of the screen. So yeah. Yeah, I don't really mind that too much. I'm sure, well, there are ways, I've seen that there are ways to crop that out, but um, yeah, anyway. 
I think that'll do it now though for this video. I'm sure it's already been long enough, but yeah, I'm sure someone will find it interesting <laughs> or maybe many people, hopefully. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, this is really cool. I'm, uh, I'm excited to keep on looking, uh, into more of these, uh, features of, uh, yeah, how awesome the RetroTeam 4K is. And I'm just kind of curious. Oh yeah. Okay, so I just went over and felt to see if it was like burning hot, but no, it's actually quite cool to the touch still. It's like slightly warm, like very, very slightly warm. The rest of the team can only feel the bottom. Yeah. yeah. It's not hot at all. It's just, yeah, just a little bit warm. Like you can tell it's on, but it's not like burning hot. So yeah, nice, cool. Well, anyway, yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. So yeah, let me know if there's other stuff you want me to test out. I'll uh, be sure to test out other systems too uh, in future videos. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But until then, yeah, these are uh, really cool. Look at that. This S video plugged into the RetroTINK 4K with the CRT profile. Yeah, it's a, such a cool experience. So cool, so cool. Yeah. And I'm definitely going to... I'll definitely uh, wheel in another TV, and CRT TV in here and see uh, how it compares to this one. Another thing, too, is that with the larger TVs, like even larger CRT TVs, the... Um, many times the black lines in between the scan lines are more pronounced and so where this is like such a huge TV like having a CRT this big would be oh wow I'd be like I'd be like as big as a car maybe but um yeah especially with this kind of convergence and stuff uh, but yeah um, yeah, anyway, yeah, this, the black lines, though, are uh, bigger on this uh, TV. So, but yeah, it looks really good, though. Yeah, anyway, I think that'll do it for now. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. And, yeah, we'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye. Oh, and make sure you like and subscribe and all that awesome stuff. Yeah, grow the channel. We're coming up to 700 subscribers. <laughs> see how big this channel grows. But yeah, it's growing little by little. So, anyway. We'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.